What was the relationship like with your dad? This podcast, Military Veteran Dad, is brought to you by the Business of Fatherhood, an effort by me to help you become a better dad. By helping dads create a lasting feeling of change on the inside, help them grow through generational trauma, and by redefining the definition of living. There is more to life than being alive. To find out more information about this, head on over to bencloy.com or check out the Business of Fatherhood podcast on any and all platforms. Dory 1, this is Fire Team Delta. Dad's coming home. Welcome to the Military Veteran Dad Podcast, where it is our mission to bring every dad home. I am your host, Ben Colloy. I'm a United States Marine veteran, husband, and a father. We will bring authentic conversations to inspire action in your life so we can close the gap between the dad you are today and the dad you want to be tomorrow. This is the Military Veteran Dad Podcast. Hey guys, welcome back. It is episode 169. Can you believe it is already almost halfway through June, which means we are just a couple weeks away from July? Oh man, the dad anxiety is definitely kicking in. And to get us kicked off here as usual, I got a great dad joke that my daughter told me and stole off of an ice cream shop sign that says, why is ice cream bad at playing tennis? Wait for it, because they have a soft serve. You are welcome to reuse that dad joke and get as much street cred as you would like from it. Let's get started because we got a lot of stuff to cover today with our next part, part three on the transition series that we've been doing here for the last month on how to transition out of military. The advice that I've taken from the people on this podcast, the interviews, and all of the advice that I wish I had on the other side of transition that I could have tweaked, could have done a little bit different, and passing it on to you to hopefully make an impact and passing it on in a way that hopefully you're passing this podcast on to someone that's transitioning out, a dad. We just had Father's Day yesterday, so hopefully you're referring this podcast out because this podcast only grows when you pass it on to other dads who need this information. So last week I hinted, and also the week prior, I hinted that this part three is called A Million Lanes Wide. Why do I call it a million lanes wide? Because if you've listened to the podcast a long time, you know that I say that a lot, that what I had wrong was I was told that there were three lanes in life. This is essentially what I call the TAPS code. That TAPS tells you there's a group of lanes that you can go in. The trade skills, you can go to school, or you can find a third alternative that most likely ends up growing and living in your parents' basement. Those three lanes were how I envision myself that I had to leave the military. There wasn't much wiggle room. There wasn't much curiosity. There was just look, apply, run, repeat. And I did that. And I did that for 10 years. And if you know the podcast story, you know that that didn't work out. It all came to a head in 2014. And that those limited lanes led to me into a place that I didn't know who I was. It was essentially an identity crisis. And I was already well into life, house, married, kids, everything was already kicking and screaming and asking for my attention, but I, on the inside, didn't know how to give myself attention to get to where I wanted to go. And so that a million lanes wide is almost the opposite, that the biggest irony that I've learned in seven years of being an entrepreneur and trying to figure this idea out is that life is so wide that every time I meet someone, I'm always like, you do what? And then followed up by, you make how much doing that? These ideas are often so simple and often so rich with wealth, with purpose with life but at the end of the day we don't know they exist because no one told us to go look no one told us to go turn over that rock so let's get started the first step and this step won't be uh any irony to anybody who's listened to the podcast for a long time and it starts with conversations the biggest idea is yes i can tell you that there is a million lanes wide but the limiting factor is is if you don't know those lanes if you don't know what they look like I can't have you describe what an interstate looks like that you've never seen. I can't tell you what a skyscraper looks like or have you understand what it looks like if you've never seen it. Now, I could maybe tell you to go look over there and maybe go do it, but if you don't know any of that information, it doesn't work. And so conversations is this core fundamental thing. If you get anything out of this part, this is the part to pay attention to because The idea of adding more lanes to your visibility, adding more width, how truly wide you see the world is this idea of having more 
conversations. And essentially it goes down to like this, that the power of hello is the single most powerful word that you will learn in your transition. You won't learn that in your tra transition, but it will be the most powerful word in your transition. And why is that so important? Because every time you say hello, you open up the door for a new lane. You get to see how this person defines their life every time you say hello. So understanding that by practicing hello, by understanding that having conversations, you are adding your wit to your visibility and visibility gives you an understanding of where you best could put in. It's kind of like putting the puzzle together without the box. And every conversation you have, you get a clearer picture of what the box looks like and then you can continue to put the, the puzzle pieces together in a certain way. So conversations is the cornerstone of this part three. All the million lanes that you want in your life won't appear unless you overcome the idea of having conversations. If you've taken the friendship course, course over on freedadcourse.com, you will also know as a veteran, there's a big reason why this whole first cornerstone you are set up for failure on. Because if you do not feel comfortable in your own skin, if you do not feel comfortable with who you are, everything else becomes harder. And there's a big giant reason why conversations might not work for you. There's also a big giant reasons why you need to suck it the fuck up and get through that and figure out how to grow up, get help, and get to the other side. Now, that's a little bit of tough love, but I've been doing this podcast long enough to know that when push comes to shove, you need a push. And you're listening to this podcast looking for that push. So understanding that whatever you're selling yourself, like, you know what, Ben? You can, I, can, I am not the kind of guy that can have conversations. BS seek the help. There are resources on this podcast galore. Go check out Virginia Cruz's episode on PTSD and moral injury. If you are one of those guys that is struggling to have conversations because of the horror that you live every day inside and the thought that you might feel inside is that, wow, what kind of monster am I to even think that I can transition out and have a happy life? Let's go into the next bullet point, width and depth. You've also heard me say this probably a lot is that there is two kind of fundamental things that you're thinking about as you transition out. You are looking at adding width, which we just talked. So I won't spend too much time understand diving into it, but you need a width. You need a wider view of the world. Most of us transition out. We have tunnel vision. The most common story that I hear is they take what they want to copy and paste what they had in the military. They want to find a place to plug that in outside the military, and they never spend any time trying to redesign it, trying to re-ask them 12 questions, trying to get to deeper understanding on anything. They just copy and paste. And oftentimes it works, and the system sells it to them, but it often leads to down the road things that you can't really foreshadow or foresee coming until it's already too late. Like a divorce, like your family still not still waiting for you to come home, still waiting for you to grow up and be the husband that your wife's partner been wanting or the dad that your kids need. So don't copy and paste. Understand that there's two fundamental things that at the end of the day in your transition you should come back to is that your goal is to add as much width to the world as possible, understanding of how wide it really is through conversations, purposeful, putting yourself places like networking events, having a conversation with people on LinkedIn, connecting on LinkedIn, all of these different places where you can meet new people. Because every time you have a new conversation with a new person, your width of the world gets bigger. Now, don't discredit in the military, you already have a pretty wide view of the world. So in some cases, you just need to apply and write down what you've already learned and seen and let that guide you about how people have designed their life. The second part of this is depth. Now, depth comes to the question of you, understanding who you are. Now, it's a good thing you've been listening here because part two was, who are you? So remembering that in order to find your million lanes wide, you need to have width and you need to have depth. If you do not have depth to who you are, your ability to identify a lane, see yourself on that lane, and understand where you could go on that lane, everything is going to be a mute point for what you do in your transition because how you feel on the inside 
who you are on the inside. These are core questions that are going to identify the lane and you're going to be able to tackle that lane, jump on it and start driving and you're going to end up where you want to be. Otherwise, you could pick a wrong lane, you could pick what you've always done and you're going to end up in the exact same pattern like we talked about in part two of that transition of understanding, have I been here before type questions. Next bullet point we want to dive into. There is no one way to live. I'll repeat that again. There is no one way to live. Your objective with understanding how wide the world is and the depth to who you are is not so that you can go out there and live someone else's life. It is that so that you can go out there and live your life on your terms. But what we often miss is permission when we miss the idea that is possible. And once you meet someone living your life or living a version of it, you're like, man, that looks amazing. You can't unsee that. And once your brain knows something is possible, it starts being able to produce it. So understanding that don't get hung up, that there's no one way to live. Now, there is the other transition. There is the other mile and road within this is the traditional W-2 world, going out, transitioning, and getting a job understanding that this is not something that I disadvocate for or advocate for. It is neutral. Just because I do not have a standard job does not mean you can't have a standard job. And what I mean by this is understanding that Million Lanes Wide applies to the corporate world as well. There is so much diversity within a career employment, and I know the feeling personally of how closed off it can feel from opportunities, jobs, postings, companies in your area. They're just like, no one's hiring always go back to bullshit because that's is what I do when I go into that mode is go back to bullshit because there is so much abundance of opportunity I was out there for careers that are thriving that have really well-paying jobs but if you don't have the vocabulary the connections the network to get there it won't matter Another avenue, the one avenue that I'm on, is entrepreneurship. It is not one that is often pushed a lot during TAPS, but there are so many abundant opportunities for veterans. And veterans are wired. If you are going out into the small business space, there are thousands and thousands of veterans out there crushing it in the small business and large business. If you look at someone like Black Rifle Coffee that started as a small business and now is a multi-billion dollar operation competing with the best of them, in a simple thing called coffee. So understand there is entrepreneurship to explore as well. Next one is front fran- franchises because franchises is one of those that you don't think of because you don't think like, I don't want to ever own a McDonald's, but there are so many different franchises out there, whether it be a, a weed service, whether it be a lawn service, whether it be mowing or any of those types of areas. So spend some time looking at different franchises and opportunities. Sometimes it can take twenty to $30,000 to get started, but maybe on the other side of coming out, maybe you're in a tax-free zone and you've got a large collection of cash, a franchise could be a perfect opportunity for you to identify as one of these perfect lanes. One of the reasons why veterans are perfectly aligned for franchises is because we are wired to follow SOP. We are wired to walk into somewhere, turn the lights on, and start following directions. And the best part about franchises, they already have proven systems. They already have proven marketing methods. It is a matter of buying a building, owning a building, or maybe even leasing a building, just turning it on, following the procedure that they, the company's already spent thousands of dollars and millions of dollars testing, turning it on and having success. So don't underestimate that. And I kind of want to put a bucket on all of those different things and kind of tell you exactly what I wish I would go back and have done. So if I could go back to Jul- not July, to Well, it was July, now that I think about it. July of 2007 is when I got out of the Marine Corps. What I did was essentially unemployed for two weeks. I got out, I got a job at a call center making $43,000 a year, and I thought I had won the lottery. I was living at home at the time, but I was immediately working on getting out and ready to move out of my parents' house because I felt like a failure if I had stayed there after living on my own for so long. And I felt in a big hurry to grow up and start living. And in this moment, the error was that there is no rush in this process. Patience is the one thing that is your virtue of of, uh, value during a transition. What I wish I would have did, got a cargo van, put a logo on the side, figured out what business, like as far as the trade skill or some type of simple type of business that I could start that I could do out of my van, and learn the skill really well and start a very simple small business that I was my own captain. I wish I would have hustled and grinded on that without anybody else in my way, without any other issues. I would have wished I would have stayed at home while doing it 
And I felt if I could go back and do that again, that would have solidified and made every, every other journey easier. Because once you have a solid business that is able to capture leads, provide a service that people like, and is one that creates referrals, the business starts growing. And once it starts growing, then you can start multiplying and stepping away from it. And 15 years later, I would be in a completely different spot now than I had if I had done that going back. So understand that we can always have advice going back. But at the end of the day, my advice is get a van, maybe live down by the river. And if you're old enough to know the Chris Farley skit from SNL, and just go for it. Because when you're getting out, it's the best time to go for it. Now, you may have a family like I did. And if you're listening to this, you probably do have a family. So that may not be the easiest case. But if you've got any shot at being able to make it on your own as an entrepreneur or have any itch to do it, you owe yourself to give it a shot. Because I'm going to tell you right now, the moment that you're transitioning out may seem chaotic, but it is ripe for that first moment to give it your best shot. Give it your all in what you think could be the biggest idea or the best idea that could change your family's life. Free up your time. Create an entire new world to dive into. Don't just assume that, like I said, you need to copy and paste from one to the other. I also want to encourage you to realize that in this process of getting out, in this process of identifying your lanes, understand the American dream is not made of debt, car payments, choices, all these suburbia things that you see as stereotypical Americana, the American dream is built out of your dream. The American dream is living your life in a way that you feel free every day, whenever, whatever it is that you do. Define your dreams. Define the American dream, not by what the Joneses are doing next door, by what would light your soul on fire. So understand that that American dream, because for me, my American dream was you got you out of you get out of the military, you transition out, you go to get your GI Bill, and in that process, the American dream shows up because you get a job that pays the bills, you start a family, you get debt, you have a car payment, but the exact opposite happened. It was my American hell instead of my American dream. So understand that the American dream is your dream, not someone else's dream, and this whole process and this whole part is identifying quickly, nevertheless, to help you understand how wide your dream could be and how to find your dream. This is also why fatherhood is so important because we have an obligation to help our kids understand what their American dream could be, help them understand how they can fit into the world even bigger. And realize that you only get one shot at this whole thing. At any day that you have, there's only one shot. There's only one shot in the first day out of the military. There's only one shot 10 days out in the military. All of these things, you only get one shot, so you might as well go all in. Jordan Peterson is famous for saying that. I've seen it going around on Instagram quite a bit where he's talking about life is pretty funny. You only get one shot, so why not just go all in? You don't know when it's going to end, so go all in. When we think like this and think of it as we only get one shot, this is how I want. I want you to design a dream and an avenue of transitioning out that's bold, courageous, and full of freedom. Your transition out should not feel like the next condition of slavery. Your next transition out should not feel like the next place where your hands are going to be handcuffed from doing what you truly want. Your life on your terms is how the transition is meant to happen. And you are not meant to live just an ordinary life. You are above ordinary. You are an extraordinary human being who has seen the world in a way that only 7% of the population has. Embrace that. Live that. And continue to pass it on. That is all I have for you in this longer part three. We'll be back into part four next week to close it out. Have an amazing week. We'll be back.